Have you ever heard a still, small voice? Hi kids, this is Auntie Myla. It's a snowy day here on the mountain where we live, but it's nice and cozy and warm inside. So I think I'll tell you a story. Our verse is 1 Samuel 3, 9, and I'm sure you've memorized it before. It's such a sweet verse. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Yes, that was the little boy Samuel. He heard God talking to him. You can read all about it here in 1 Samuel. The priest Eli told Samuel that when you hear God calling, say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Such a sweet story. Well, this story that I'm going to tell you happened in December 1974. Oh, it was such an exciting Christmas for me because I was planning a wedding and I was going to get married. Oh, so exciting. And I had everything planned, the wedding dress, the food, everything planned. The invitations had all been sent out. And it was a week before Christmas. And my brother, who was in college, was driving up. And he was bringing a car full of cousins. And we were really excited to see the cousins because they were all coming for Christmas and then the wedding. Well, it was a stormy night and there was lots of snow and, and it was late and I went to bed because um, I didn't know when my brother was going to get there. Remember, in 1974, we didn't have cell phones. And my mom and dad went to bed in their bedroom and it was snowing and snowing and the wind was blowing. This was in close to Bicycle, Alberta, Canada. And it can get cold there. And they, you can have lots of snow in Alberta. And my mom suddenly woke up and she had a dream. And she said to my daddy, wake up, wake up. I had a dream that Ren, my brother, was stuck in a snowbank just two miles from us. And she said, hurry, get dressed and go and pull them out of the ditch. And my dad said, are you sure? She says, yes, 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 I had this dream. I know it's true. I know God sent me this dream. So my daddy, he's real sweet, he got up and he got dressed, put his gloves on, his boots on, big parka, covered up, got the keys to the car and went out and started driving down the road, down Highway 21 and turned on Highway 9 and went on down and he was driving along, driving along. All of a sudden he saw a car in the ditch with its lights on. He thought, that must be it. And he drove up and got way off the road and parked and went and looked and sure enough it was my brother, Wren and the girls. Oh, Dad, I'm so happy to see you. I didn't know what I was going to do. I am stuck in the ditch and I can't get out. How did you know I was stuck? He said, Mom had a dream. And Wren said, Oh. So they got a big rope out and tied it around the bumper and pulled, was able to pull him out. And then he could drive the rest of the way home. And they got home safely, finally. Well, you know that still small voice? I believe that's the Holy Spirit. And when you have an impression, you need to do it. I have another short story for you. Just a few days ago, my husband and I had gone to bed really early. We had worked really hard and we were tired. And we were in bed, I think, sleeping by about 7.30. We went to bed with the chickens. <laughs> does that mean? You go to bed with the chickens. If you say, oh yeah, she went to bed with the chickens, what does that mean? That means you went to bed really early. Well, what time do chickens go to bed? <laughs> hmm? 
Have you asked them? What time do they go to sleep? Well, I don't know what time it is, but I can tell you one thing. It's before the sun goes down. When the sun starts going down, our chickens all start going to their roost, their chicken house. And they go in there, and sometimes I take food out just as the sun's going down to them. Oh, no, they're asleep. And I call them, and they tell me, we're not coming out. We're in bed. We're going to sleep. They go to sleep really early, and they also get up early. So my husband and I had gone to bed with chickens. We had gone to bed really early. Well, I woke up. I slept for about two hours, and it was 9.30, and I woke up. I said, I wonder what time it is. And I looked on our dresser. We have a digital clock that's lit up at night so I can see what time it is. It said 9.30. And I lay there. I thought, oh, it's only 9.30. And then I thought of Mary Lee, our daughter, Mary Lee. It, that thought, her name just came to my mind. I thought, oh, I'm going to pray for her. So I started praying. I just laid there and I prayed and prayed for her. She's our daughter who's a nurse. And I just prayed and prayed and prayed for her. And then I finally got up and I went and I read my Bible for a while and I prayed some more. And I prayed for all my children. I prayed for you. Yes, I did. And I prayed and prayed and finally after a long time I thought I think I can sleep now. So I went back and I climbed back into my nice warm bed. The next day I called my daughter and I said, well, I just woke up about 9.30 and, and I just was concerned about you and so I was praying for you. And she says, 9.30? She says, Mom, that's exactly the time I needed you to be praying. I said, how was that? She says, well, I was driving from Kennewick, Washington, up to Spokane on the freeway. And she said the weather was so bad, I kept meeting um, cars in the ditch, trucks were in the ditch, the road was terrible. She was driving home to Spokane. And she said, it was just terrible, that's exactly the time I need you to be praying. I didn't know you were driving to Spokane last night. I'm so glad I prayed. I had the impression, pray for Mary Lee. And so I did. And God took care of her. She was able to get through all the snow and ice on the road. And she got home to her husband, safe and sound. That is a still, small voice. So, if you wake up in the night and you can't sleep, pray. Yes, pray. Just pray and pray and pray. Pray for your family, your mom and dad. Pray for your friends, your teacher. And thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that I have a cozy, warm bed to sleep in on a cold winter night. Well, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I want to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for that still, small voice, for talking to us, sending us dreams, and telling us what we need to know. Thank you for keeping us safe. For Jesus' sake, amen.